I'm talking today with Marcus Lee, a young industrial design graduate from UNSW BE. Marcus is quite an extraordinary person because he is the Young Designer of the Year for 2016 and also was shortlisted for the prestigious Red, Red Dot Design Awards. So he's got a lot going on, basically because of an extraordinary design that you did when you were in your graduating year at UNSW, the VITA hemodialysis machine. So we've got a lot to talk about today, but mm. first, what really brought you to industrial design in the first place? Yeah, um, I think looking back and connecting the dots, since I was a little child, um, I think I was always destined for a creative sort of discipline, um, but it wasn't always clear to me um, where exactly I, I would take that. And I think it, it, coming out of high school, I was still quite confused, as most students were, as to what I wanted to do. Um, but it wasn't until my art teacher in, um, in high school suggested to me that I, I might look at industrial design. Um, and then ever since I, I did start doing industrial design and, and throughout the degree, I started falling more and more in love with it. So Marcus, what made you decide to do industrial design at UNSW Built Environment? Well, I think the, the program in particular is, is, a, is a standout. The fact that, um, that we have, for example, um, an embedded honours year where, where we do the fourth year project and we kind of, all of our, all of our skills that we've developed in the first three years, we, it all comes into one big project that we can really take forward. I think the way it's structured and, and, and that in particular was a real standout for me um, for the industrial design program, but also the really great teachers and um, lecturers that we have here. Um, I think they're really knowledgeable and they, they definitely defined who I became as, as, a, as a young professional. But then when, once I got into industrial design, it, it started becoming more clear that this is exactly what I wanted to do and, and no other field appealed in the same way. Um, and so to do it at the built environment was, was fantastic. And why yeah. do you think that is? Do you think it's because design brings all of these elements together? Would that be your um, yeah. sense of it? I think so. I think in industrial design particularly also is, acts as like an intersection between a lot of different fields and so I got to have a taste of a lot of different um, a lot of different disciplines without necessarily having to stick myself to one um, and the fact that you can bring all these different ideas together like for example with, with my um, my hemodialysis machine being able to look at the medical field but I was having to look at like the marketing side of that and, and talking to doctors, looking at patients, all the human-centred sort of aspect of it. Um, I think, yeah, um, that's why I love my industrial design. It's just, and it's so broad as well, so you could take a career almost anywhere where, where there's a product. So in, in those terms, what do you think is the sort of key takeaway in terms of the education that you had in the UNSW Built Environment faculty? I mean, obviously it crosses disciplines and brings a lot of different elements together, as you said, but what was the, the kind of the, the core of your education, do you think? There's so many things I've learned obviously in the degree, but I think one of the key things would be, um, I guess, learning the whole d design thinking methodology, thinking from a system, thinking human-centered design, um, and, and, and thinking of all aspects when you come to a solution, so you're not just solving one problem but creating another. Um, and I think that's something really important that I, that I was taught. And it's almost like, like giving yourself a new lens to look at the world through when, when, um, when you learn about the design way of thinking and you think about human-centered things because you no longer, I guess, accept things the way they are, but you critically analyze everything around you. And I think that's, um, that's a really important, I guess, driver of change as well um, when you start realizing these things. So I think, yeah, coming from, from the UNSW Industrial Design Program, that's, that's what I learned and that's what I really, really appreciate. Well, I mean, I think that's music to my ears because human-centered design is really the core of this faculty and also changing the world, making the world a better place through design. So. Um, how do you think you came to, I mean, I'm really wondering genuinely, mm. um, a graduating project which was focused on medical equipment. Was mm. that about making a difference or what was the key motivator and driver for that, that choice? Yeah, definitely about making a difference and definitely about taking my final on easier project and doing something that was really worthwhile and that was really going to make as much of an impact as, as I could make as an industrial designer. Um, but I think, yeah, the, the key moment where, where I sort of um, really got inspired by dialysis was when um, one of my lecturers slash uh, tutors, um, Rena, told me about dialysis um, and, told, and, and so I started looking into dialysis and I started realising what a huge problem it is for people with kidney failure. So that's essentially what, what led me to realise that I wanted to, to pursue the path of creating better solutions for people um, who were on dialysis. So that graduating project was really the core of, of the fourth year which is is a real opportunity for you to go deep 
and broad. Um, so what were all the interdependencies that actually made that come together for you? Yeah, so I think all the interdependencies become really relevant or come you start realizing them during the research project when you realize who you have to reach out to, who you have to go see. Um, and so, for example, during my project, I went out to the most remote, um, medically remote regions in Australia and I spoke to patients and doctors and really got their viewpoints. Um, even from around the area here, I got a lot of nephrologist um, uh, feedback as well. Um, and I think it, that's what it's really all about. It's all about looking at everyone who's involved, all the stakeholders, and, and bringing it together to come to a solution that is um, that's feasible and, and that actually solves the problem. So I imagine like um, your teachers would be like mentors and guiding you where mm. to go and how to do this. I mean, because you've never done it before, right? You're sort mm, of, exactly. this is new territory. It's, yeah. it's wild frontier. Um, so was that kind of mentoring and, and stewardship very key to actually getting into the right doors oh, and, and asking the right questions? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think we've got really great resources here that you're in a service built environment. Um, and I mean, I have to say a very special thank you to um, to the industrial design teachers who who, who helped me through my uh, fourth year. Um, yeah, um, and I think that they're just really knowledgeable, and, and they tell. You that, I mean, all, everything I know now is because of them essentially. Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, you, you come into the degree not really knowing too much, really, but then these. I think the resources that we have here and the stuff that we have here really helps help, you know, I think everyone, I can speak for everyone when I say that, they, um, they really give you the guidance and, and help you ask the right questions, what you should be researching, where you should be putting your priorities. Marcus, that, that really kind of brings me to that point of like, what, what would you tell current students, you know, or new students sort of embarking on a, a um, program in industrial design, what would you say to them to do? And, and, how to take advantage of all the resources and opportunities here. Yeah, well, I think when you do industrial design, you, you quickly start learning it's all about the, the tangible. I mean, not, not just about, but the tangible part is a huge is a huge part of it. And I think the fact that we've got such a readily available access to, to a workshop right there in, in the square house where we can, you know, we can learn about new techniques to create new forms or when, we're, when we want to prototype things or make new iterations and, and go back and forth, the workshop is there as a resource and, and also people there to help you to help you bring your ideas to life and, and so you can test things and, and grow and learn. Um, and so I would say, yeah, definitely take advantage of the workshop, um, but also the, the staff there as well. I think, yeah, that would be my advice. And, and just follow what you're passionate about as well, because in industrial design you can take it down so, so many different routes, but just follow what you're passionate about and that might not always, might not always be clear, um, but you can only find that by doing. You have some yeah. sort of terrible failures where you went like, oh, this is a great idea and then testing it and prototyping it and iterating it, it's just going like, it's just not going to deliver what I... Yeah. Yeah. And that's part of the process. Yeah. I mean, you can only get to the better solution by creating a solution that doesn't work and putting and establishing, okay, that doesn't work and then moving on. Um, yeah, I mean, we're definitely taught in our, in, in our discipline that you have to fail, fail often and fail early sort of thing so that you can, you can move on to the better solution because if you are too precious about your first idea, you're only ever going to get stuck there. And so I think, yeah, so I think definitely failing is, failing is not really failing. Failing is, is learning and moving on. Yeah. Yeah. And so the other thing that um, I, I sort of heard you talk about earlier was sort of the interdependencies. So mm. as an industrial designer, you can bring something to another person's problem set. Did you sort of do that at university as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that comes down to all the, inter all the um, extracurricular sort of stuff you can do. So for example, um, I got involved with the university solar car team, SunSwift. Um, that was just a voluntary thing, but I learned so much from it. So I got to work with a whole bunch of different disciplines from, from engineering and, and from business. So I worked with like electrical engineers, photovoltaics, mechanical, and looking at um, working with marketing people. And I think it was really in enriching. And, and, and so I was on the industrial design team that was helping design the interior of the car, helping making it more ergonomic um, make it more comfortable um, looking at the criteria for the solar car race and, and, and I think I think we brought a lot to the table but we've learned so much as well. I think everyone brings a lot to the table when it comes to the interdisciplinary um, opportunities and I, which I think there are plenty of at, at University of New South Wales. So what would you really attribute your early success to? I mean most people would have the success that you've had much later on in, in the development of their career. Um, do you, is it because you've chosen an area which has huge impact um, or do you think it's because you try everything, that you're very diverse in your interests, that you work at 150 um, percent? 
that you're engaged in everything. I mean, what is it that you think is the defining characteristic of someone who has such early success like yourself? So I, I think it's a, a combination. Um, but I think also um, anyone who knows me knows that I, I tend to put more on my plate than I can generally handle. And I, I'm a strong believer that, that you should every project you, you sort of take part in, you should treat it like it's the most important project. I think that's the only way that you can get to the end of your degree with a body of work that, um, that you can be proud of and that you can actually take forward. Um, but equally, yeah, working in, in, in disciplines that you know will have a huge impact. And in particular, I mean, that's what drives me when I know that something that I'm working on is going to make a huge impact. That, that's what really gets me out of bed and, and, and makes me, you know, want to keep doing this. While you're at uni, even the smallest of projects, I think they have to be treated with the most, you know, they have to be treated like the most important thing because only, only then, every opportunity is, can be a big opportunity, I think, if, if you treat it like, it like it is. Just to wrap up, I'd really like to ask you where you see industrial design is going in the next 20, 25 years mm. in your lifetime. Well, I, th yeah, I think the fact that industrial design is, is a broad, is a really broad, as, um, broad degree kind of equips you to, to all these um, these new sort of disciplines that are coming out, like experience design, user interface, things like that, where we might not necessarily have fully fledged degrees for. Industrial design is is kind of where you can best get equipped for these fields um, that are emerging in today's digital age. Um, and I think the, the opportunities are only expanding, and, and and there's almost no telling where where it might go, but. Um, I think that the skills we learn in industrial design definitely equips us for, for, the, for the unknown, um, the I guess humans, yeah, yeah. the human centred yeah. things that we really have to look at. Well I think that's a great note to end on. Mm. So thank you Marcus and thank you for coming today and um, we wish you all the best for the future and we just can't wait to see where this divergent exploratory career takes you. Thank you.